the 1969 Oldsmobile W3442, coming up next. Hello once again Oldsmobile fans, I am your host Dr. Olds with a brand new model car video just for you. Today we're going to be looking at AMT Earl's 1969 Oldsmobile W3442. This is an amazing kit and one of the cars that I really love because I actually own a 1972 Oldsmobile Cutlass, which is the last year of this type of body style. 1969 is actually the last year of the way the f side fenders and everything are. And uh, of course the rear quarter panels. <laughs> they changed shape in 1970 till the last one in 72. So this one actually shares a lot of parts with the 1968 Oldsmobile. But new for 69 was of course the first time we had the split grill like this because 68 had headlight, parking light, headlight, little grill, and then on the other side, right? So anyway, this model kit has come out a few times in the past. I do believe MPC had it, the original molds. So I'm going to show you a bunch of old box arts and we're going to check it out and then we'll get into this amazing review. And now, Oldsmobile fans, we're going to wind the clock all the way back to 1969, where Dr. Oldsmobile himself brings you a brand new W30442 Crazy Street Machine. And here we have this nice model built and painted in nugget gold. And it has the fresh air intakes, because that's what the W30 package was, which leads to hoses which go up into the air cleaner and into that nice four barrel carburetor into our 400 cubic inch engine. Now, this model kit originally was an MPC kit and it was a W30 in the first release and then AMT promptly bought uh, MPC and everything else and in 1989 it has been known as an AMT model ever since. This edition is from 2002 and I do believe it was a Walmart one. The model builder did a great job on this thing except he kind of missed the side marker lights. <laughs> anyway, a minor pick. I used to be in the Oldsmobile Club. I got a 72 sitting out in my backyard, which uh, of course we can use as some of the reference here. So we have a nice picture of our interior here and then the side profile of our car. And you'll notice here in the engine bay, you got these red inner fender liners. And no, that's not a mistake. For uh, since 1967 to 1971, Oldsmobiles had them as an option code number 522. These red inner fenders were made of lightweight injection molded plastic to save weight and enhance the red line tires of the time, which of course are on these kits. The other cool thing about it, we got our Olds right there. Very cool. Just tilt this up. So the end of the box looks like the front cover, of course, and then here again we've got the engine detail. This course is skill level 2 kit for ages 10 and up, uses glue and paint. And yeah, there's the other end of that box again. So just turning this over this way, we'll of course lift the lid on our cutlass. And first of course we get our instructions here. And then our decal sheet, which I'm going to keep hidden till the end, just keep you guys interested. <laughs> then we've got our Oldsmobile body, the tires, our glass, everything's nice in a the bag. There's our gray parts right there. And finally our chrome. So what I'm going to do is clear the box out of the way and then we will take a look at all the parts and learn a little more about Oldsmobile. Now before we get into our instructions and all the rest of our regular review, one thing that I've got that's really cool is a 1972 Oldsmobile 
chassis service manual. And this covers the F-85 Vista Cruiser Cutlass Delta 88 Custom Cruiser Delta 88 Royale, the 98 and the Tornado. Basically everything Oldsmobile had to offer for 72 I have right here in the original repair book. Now this is cool because of course it's got all your bits and pieces. It tells you exactly how, how to fix up your 72 Oldsmobiles, every single model and make. And then I'm just going to show you a couple of little brief things quickly, and then we'll get back into the regular review. Now, one of the most important parts of this book is, of course, how to read your body and style number plate. This, of course, is sitting inside the car. And as you can see here, it tells you the first number is the division or the model year. Then you've got your division series, the body style, the assembly plant. So LAN, so this car is from Lansing. If it said R, it would be from Arlington. BF is Fremont. And FRA is Framingham. That's where your things would be made. And then you got your unit number. And then your lower... Oh, this is the paint here, the body and paint. So you got your upper body color sitting here, or fabric, if you got a vinyl top, and your lower body color here. And then, of course, your... Your trim combination number is in here, and the time build code is in here. Oh, there's the year down there, 72. This is a division series in here. Okay, so that's how you read your plate. So if you're in the wrecking yard and you come across an Oldsmobile and you want to match it up for your model kit, this tells you how to read it all. Of course, this is for 72, so it might be a bit different, but still... So looking at the paint colors, we'll get into that in just a second here. Now, in addition to the paint codes, we also have all these other codes, like A33, which means you have a window and a power tailgate. That, of course, would be for your station wagons. But other cool things here, like B-07, which is the police apprehender package for the highway patrol. Uh, then we get into L32, is the 350 cubic inch two-barrel, which I think is in mine. Uh, then the L34, which is a four-barrel 350, and the L35, which is the 350 in the B body, which is the bigger ones. Then 455s down here. We got a L75 package, 455 cubic inch four-barrel in the A body. And the L77, which is in the W30. For, this is for 72. But then we come down here, and there's our W30 air induction system for the 455 cubic inch. Basically your ram air or in our 69 the um, the engine with the snorkels underneath. And right here we have our paint chart exterior colors. So number 11 is cameo white, 14 is silver pewter, 18 is antique pewter, 19 is ebony black, 24 is nordic blue, 26 is viking blue, 28 is royal blue, 36 is radiant green, 43 is pinehurst green, 48 is Sequota Green, 50 is Covert Beige, 53 is Saturn Gold, 54 Sovereign Gold, 56 Sunfire Yellow, 57 Baroque Gold, 62 is Saddle Tan, 63 is Saddle Bronze, 65 is Flame Orange, 69 is Nutmeg, 75 is Matador Red, and 81 is Mambu, which I don't know what that is at all. <laughs> and then up here we have our vinyl roof covers. So a double A is white, double B is black, double F is saddle tan, double G is green, and double T is covert beige. And then on a convertible, double A is white, double B is black, double G is green, double T is covert beige. So they don't have a saddle tan convertible top. But that is all your paints and vinyl roofs for 1972. I'm not sure what it is for 69, but anyway, that's a good chunk of stuff. And the last piece of information that I want to give out of this book before we carry on in our review is, of course, the identification of wheel discs and steering wheels. So we have all of these, of course, but here's the main ones. The Superstock 1, which is basically a Magnum 500 style wheel. The Superstock 2, which is included in these kits. And then the Superstock 4, which is on the Tornados. So that's a huge wheel. And then we've got all these other nice discs, which would be hubcaps, of course. And then the simulated wire wheels. And then here we have our deluxe steering wheel for the F85, which is in my cutlass. 
the custom sports wheel, which usually ended up in the 442s, and then you got your bigger wheels for your Tornados and 98s. But again, a most valuable piece of information. Now we'll dig right into our instructions here for our 69 Olds W3442. And I'll just wind this back a little bit. The engine that they say that this is, is a 350 horsepower, 400 cubic inch motor. There is also the option to build this as a custom 400 cubic inch with 400 horsepower and tricarbs. I'm not sure if tricarbs were an option for this, but I did find a really unique engine, which I'll share with you right now. And that, of course, is a really rare 1969 Oldsmobile Straight 6. I have never even seen that. I was doing a web search for Oldsmobiles, and that came up, and I was like, I need to get that in this video. Anyway, if you're kit basher, you can build that thing and throw it in, but if you're not, let's just stick with our instructions. So, of course, we got a big, huge instruction sheet, so I'll just delve into this little by little. But here's this amazing line drawing of the Oldsmobile 442 W30 for 69. Oh, and one thing about 69, this was the second year of this body style, but the first year to incorporate the two headlights side by side, the grill and the divider bar. So you get two little grills, divider bar and the headlights. The prior year, 1968, had a headlight, the parking light, headlight and the grill that connected in the middle. So that's how you know you're looking at a 69. So let's carry on to our first panel. Here's our first panel, which is the wheel assembly. And you have your choice between stock and custom. Now with custom, you could actually go two ways because here they also have a drag slick. So that's sort of more of a drag racing kind of thing. But you could also use the Goodyear Polyglass GT tires in here instead of the slicks and basically have a custom and a dragster. So let's just take a look at the stock one first. Of course here, as we have just learned, we have our super stock two wheels going into these Goodyear Polyglass GT tires, the retainer, and our wheel back. And it's the same for custom, except we're getting American mag wheels. And then on here, we're getting the American mag wheel as well as a drag slick. So there's our wheel choices for this kit. Figure four shows our interior assembly for stock and custom. And down here, they have all the paint colors and numbers. That's uh, universal throughout this whole thing. So here we have our 1969 Oldsmobile Dash with our steering wheel going in. The brakes and clutch pedals are underneath. Uh, it's an interior bucket, but it does have bucket seats and seat backs, as well as this three-piece console. So the bottom, the top, and the shifter all included. The interior comes together very nice and fits well in the kit. And here we are with our engine, and there's our Dr. Oldsmobile right there with the checkered flag and the V for victory. This kit can be built one of two ways, either as a daring Dr. Oldsmobile's W30 machine stock featuring a four barrel 350 horse 400 cubic inch V8, or with a 400 horsepower 400 cubic inch V8 custom. Please read through all instructions carefully before you begin. Always test fit parts before smitting and for best bond, remove paint and plating from parts where glue is to be applied to get that nice plastic to plastic melt. And there's our official GM registry or anyway engine assembly stock and custom so this is sub assembly a you have this nice engine block with actual cylinder heads in it and the rockers the bottom parts up top or the valve rods i guess the cylinder heads left and right a separate bell housing here and the starter motor and the oil pan and the front water pump cover so they're saying in here to paint this all red which is not quite an Oldsmobile color. Usually there is a red engine, but they have used gold and metallic blue. Of course, I'm talking about 72, so I might be a little off on 69. But anyway, this is the beginning of our engine. Let's see what happens next. Next up, we have our transmission in two pieces going together, which will attach to our bell housing. The oil filter will go up under here, and then our power steering pump goes onto our front belts and pulleys. This engine is correct for an Oldsmobile because, again, it has that tall oil filler right there, and the water pump looks correct. 
Next, we continue with our engine assembly, and this is the final assembly. So here we get our stock intake for the 400 with the 350. Uh, the intake manifold, our four barrel carburetor, and our air cleaner. 350 horsepower, guys. This is the 400 horsepower version with the air cleaner, uh, three two barrel carburetors, and the tri power intake manifold. Now, again, I'm not really sure if they had this in 69 because they were starting to get away from the tri carbs at the end of the 60s. So, anyway, that that is uh, something to look up in our research. Here's our custom valve covers. You also get stock valve covers, both of these being chrome plated, a distributor, custom headers, as well as the stock headers left and right, the alternator, and our fan gluing on here. And there is going to be an upper radiator coming in, upper radiator hose, pardon me, coming in, and somewhere there's this little asterisk pointing to it. Oh, on our intake manifolds. There we go. So there's our block getting all put together for the final assembly. Now figure 8 and figure 9 are all about the chassis. And this is where you get to decide whether or not you're going to go code 522 and put in the red inner fender wells. Or just stick with the regular which were black. So there is a choice in there. Anyway, we've got our upper control arms gluing in on our chassis, which is a one pan. Then we have our uh, lower control arms, the springs, the king pins, right and left, all popping into our chassis here, and our tie rod. And this kit does have posable front steering, which is really awesome. And then chassis uh, figure nine is a chassis assembly for stock or custom. This, of course, is where you're going to drop your engines in. So you have your choice of either the stock or the custom engine gluing into your frame here. Your radiator uh, hose, you get your radiator shroud, your radiator, and these are your left and right air hoses, which are going to come off the ends of your air cleaner. And your upper radiator hose, and then the battery, and everything goes nicely in this engine bay. Panel 10 shows our chassis assembly. This is in the rear part of the car as well as up front. So there's your air scoops for the W30 package. Your exhaust pipes are all dropping in. And then you have your upper and lower rear axle, the drive shaft, your shocks, which should be dark gray. And then your springs dropping in here. All the uh, paint codes are down in here somewhere. Oh, up there, pardon me. And uh, yeah, so Basically, you get your nice Oldsmobile chassis in here. Figure 11 and 12 are showing our body assemblies going together. So here we have stock and custom. This is underneath. Our windshield and rear window are gluing in, as well as our rear view mirror, which glues into our glass. We have our firewall here, which would be painted gloss black, or even satin black. And then our master cylinder, which is two components, which is going on here. So again, you get a steel color in here, and the back should be an anodized, anodized pardon me, metal. So it looks kind of like a rainbow. Then here in figure 12, we get our body assembly. We have our hood going on here, the 442 decal on the front, and our stripes gluing on the hood. Side view mirror is coming in, the interior pops up from underneath, and then we've got our grill, uh, our front bumper assembly and the decals more 442 and the optional W30 decal going on there. And to wrap the kit up we have figure 13 which is the final body assembly for stock and custom. Now this is again another decal you get which is along number 10, number 9 on the other side. Headlights are going into that grill and then the grill inserts are popping in. Then in figure 14 our final body assembly this is where you pop your wheels on. You put in your rear bumper with the taillights and the decal and the 442 emblem on the back of the trunk lid. And now here is the big discrepancy. It shows these two decals going on the trunk lid. Now, Oldsmobile had a thing that they never had the stripes on the trunk lid. If there was a stripe, it would be something going along here across the back, but never like this. And in the Oldsmobile Club, if you have stripes on the back here, everybody will start calling your Cutlass a Chevelle. 
because Chevy Chevelle's had the stripes on the trunk lid, whereas Old's only had them on the hood. And that completes our look at our W30 instruction sheet for our Olds 442. And here's our 1969 Oldsmobile body. And as you can see, MPC originally designed this thing, but they got it 100% right, and I applaud them for it. This is probably one of the best MPC kits that has ever come out. And uh, it's nice that AMT actually took it over and, of course, keep it running. So the this kit has the actual proper radiator support panel in here, which is just amazing with the hood latch and everything, just like the real car. It also has in our grill in here underneath. This kit, of course, has the full length hood that covers all this. So originally earlier Oldsmobiles would have this panel sitting up top. Well, now it's hidden for 69, possibly 68 as well. Actually, definitely 68 as well. <laughs> then, uh, of course, the proportions and dimensions are all correct. So I'm just going to turn this up to the side here. Now, in 68 and 69, the fenders just came flush out of the body, and then they were sunken in a little bit here. Sort of like, I hate to say, the 68 Chevelles also had indentations in here. But for 70 and up to 72, of course, they started to incorporate the cork Coke bottle shapes into the fenders, as we'll probably see soon. So anyway, we've got our nice Oldsmobile logo here, which also served as a side marker light. And then, of course, the square side mic marker light in the front. I'm so excited, I can't English. There's a little section here you got to remove. The nice thing about this is, if you wanted one of the Oldsmobiles that was a pillar coupe, you could put a post right there with some evergreen styrene. Do a bit of research on that car. We got our trunk panel. It does have the little key latch hole down at the bottom, so when you're sanding this, try not to sand that off. Of course, the body is beautiful. The actual door handles look correct, although you will have to drill them out or, you know, paint the whole thing a color and then carefully paint around there. There is a chrome trim that goes along there, which you'll need your bare metal foil for. And I do believe there was a chrome package that had going up around the wheel arches. I'm more familiar with the 72 than the 69s. The one thing that is universal, up top here there is a seat belt mounted in the roof panel. That is a real thing and I can show you that as well. Alright, so I'm in the backyard here in my 72 Cutlass and up top we're looking at the headliner here and as you can see there's this plastic cover that covers the seat belt. And the seat belt is up here, so if you need the shoulder belt, which was pretty new for 72, <clears throat> sorry, you just pull it down here, okay, and then on our seat belt is that hole there. So on the bottom of this is that little peg clip. So that goes into the hole. Whoops. Okay, put a knee there. So that goes in the hole like that, and then you just pull it back and it locks in place, and then you have your shoulder belts. Now later years, of course, they sewed the shoulder belt onto the lap belt, but of course this is back in 72 and it was brand new, and well, you know how people were then. Now you've also got your sun visors molded in up there, which would have been nice if they were separate pieces that we could position up or down. They've got little squares here where your window glass will go in, and again up in the front. Not very many mold marks, basically up in the roof, which is sort of upsetting. <laughs> but otherwise, this is very much a perfect representation of the 69 Cutlass. Next up we have our chassis pan, which is hooked up to these exhaust pipes here, so I'll just move this over a little bit, <laughs> get the full picture. So, of course, here's our rear exhaust pipes with our mufflers and the front extensions. These bits would go up into your manifold. And then here we've got our chassis. And remember, if you're going to paint this with the red fenders for your 522 package, uh, you can do that. Also, you could paint these in a satin black. There's our little reservoir sitting here. Okay, the top isn't that interesting. There are some wires on there, which is correct. But as we turn it over, of course you can see the full frame in here, 
and then our bits for the front steering. What would have made this kit a lot better is if this was a separate molded pan, much like the later AMT kits. But, you know, for the detail under here, MPC got this thing so perfect, <laughs> you can't, you know, discredit them too much. There's our gas tank, then the rear uh, mountings for our Oldsmobile rear suspension. Oldsmobile used a full perimeter frame on here. This, of course, would be satin black. In here would be a flat black. Up there, all this would be satin black again. So, very nice detail on this undercarriage. And finally, for our big pieces, we have the interior, which has the correct long package shelf back here. A nice bench seat. Little notches for the front buckets to go in. The transmission tunnel and our consoles will be in there. There's a floor mat sitting here. Unfortunately, it does have a mold mark sitting in there. There's a couple there on the carpet in the back. Now, unfortunately, they went with the bucket, so that doesn't really give you the proper detail. And, you know, if they went with separate panels, like later AMT kits of the 90s, you could have got that nice Oldsmobile door handle in here. This is an Oldsmobile door handle. And it would have looked great sitting like in our interior, just in the back. But instead we kind of get something that looks like just kind of a a little indented line in here. But again, you know, bucket tubs, what can you do? Underneath is perfect. There's no mold marks or anything. So again, nice work by MPC. Next up in our gray components is, of course, the hood and suspension in the front and rear. And our under hood details like firewall radiator fan radiator fan shroud uh, master cylinders battery all this stuff and what's really nice is you do have the posable steering which always looks cool these are our grills there's a bit of flash on the grills but overall this is a clean casting and then there's our hood with the little vents in the back which is correct there's our little tongue now uh there is some mold marks under here. It does have the correct matting underneath. And it's got two little holes there, again, for connecting up with something with your Ram Air. Now, this kit was also also has come out as the um, Hurst 442, the special Oldsmobile with all the racing bits. So there are some little holes and stuff that are for that car that are not really supposed to be for this car that are, of course, underneath the hood and whatnot. Our next gray parts tree has the engine components, and it also has our wheel backs, and, of course, the little retainers. But again, I mean, this motor is awesome for MPC. This must have been the last years of MPC and MPC design. You have all your rockers sitting on there. You have the valve lifter ends, and you also have your cylinder bores in this engine block. So let's bring this thing up into our camera. There, I mean, look at how great that is. You could build this thing as an engine on the bench with this car being a diorama piece, and it would look amazing. On the back, well, not too much for sink marks and mold or whatever. But there's your hoses. There is mold mark on the bottom. And then our wheel backs. But everything looks just like the old's 400 cubic inch. And here we have these amazing interior components as our last bit of the gray parts tree. And as you can tell, although it doesn't have the separate side molded panels, which would have made this model kit the cream of the crop, it does make up for it on the additional components. The dashboard looks correct for a 69 Cutlass. The steering wheel is the correct one. It doesn't have the rally wheel in here with the extra spokes, but it still has the nice proper wheel. And of course, here's our bucket seats and that center console, and our brake pedals. So let's just bring this up to the camera. I'm gonna bring up that dashboard. You can see, oops, can't go out of focus there. You can see it's got the proper vents with the little uh, bars in there that you can tilt up and down. The radio, the glove box is right shape. The instruments are of course correct as well. Then moving on to the seats, we get the proper Oldsmobile style tuck and roll. Nice pattern. The wheel or the seat backs look correct. Our console, okay, there it is. It should be good with that chrome insert that goes in there. And then we've got that 
deluxe steering wheel sitting there as well as our pedals. So again, very nice work by the makers at MPC. And now we get into my favorite part of all the model kits, which of course is the chrome tree. And here we have our front grille and bumper assembly, as well as the rear bumper. And the bumpers just hung on on bumper mounts, of course. They're basically a decoration, not like today where they're impact bumpers. Here we have our American mag wheels. This is the intake manifold for the tricarbs, which are in here. And then there's our air cleaner for our stock version, the air cleaner for the tricarbs. This is the console here, the chrome piece that goes on top. We've got our little mirrors down here, our shift lever. And then we've got exhaust pipes and exhaust manifolds for the custom. Our valve covers, these ones are custom, these ones are stock. There's a stabilizer bar, the uh, fan, alternator, four barrel carburetor, four barrel intake, which is chrome. And then we've got our mirror here and our super stock two wheels sitting down here, which are nice to paint. And we'll just bring this up into the camera so you can see. We'll just turn it around. There's our nice Oldsmobile front grille the, with the turn signal lights down below. And you're gonna have to carefully scrape the chrome in here and in here to glue on the headlights and the little grille inserts. Again, very nicely done. That console, you can see a pattern on there, which is very nice. You just turn this over. A couple of mold marks on here, but you want to paint this section black just to get it to hide on your car. Again, the chrome is very nice on here, and you should have a lot of fun putting this together. Next up, we have our glass components, or clear transparent components. We have the front windshield, the rear glass, and our headlights here, as well as the rear taillights, which have the correct waffle type pattern on them, just like a real 69 Olds. Now the camera won't pick that up, of course, <laughs> but it, but trust me. Okay, anyway, there's our glass, and as you can see, it's nice and scratch-free. Uh, AMT put this in a nice bag for us, so that was a good saving grace. Hey, one thing I didn't notice about this kit is it doesn't have that steering wheel scotch taped into the rear panel. Our headlights have the correct waffle pattern on them as well, so make sure you get those facing the right way when you put them in your front bumper. If you want to have a good year of driving, don't forget to put Goodyear tires on your vehicle. Well, okay, I'm being cute there, but here we have our Goodyear GT Polyglass tires, which of course were bias belted. And over here we have our Goodyear Blue Streak Ovals. And these have been on AMT kits for a very long time. Of course, these tires are basically from 1967. But they are good detail. I do like them, even though they're on everything. <laughs> and if you want to paint them up right, they should look like this. Okay, and that's uh, those guys. And then here, of course, we have the Blue Streak Specials, which are your drag slicks. Which, again, is kind of odd that they put drag slicks in this and there's nothing really drag stir about this Oldsmobile. Anyway, there's our tire combinations. Finally, we have our decal sheet with the nice 442 emblems on here. Then we've got a license plate from Wisconsin, which is a normal type plate, CDE245. And there's also a New York one, which is NYS123. This could go in with your Ghostbusters diorama, because they're from New York as well. We've got our W30s on there. These are the nice blue stripes for your custom. And then we have the proper hood stripes with the improper trunk stripes on there as well. Unfortunately, they're only black. Oldsmobile did offer a lot of different colored stripes. But this basically limits us to making a light colored car. This is the Oldsmobile that I built a long time ago before I joined the Oldsmobile Club. And I used some Fred Caddy decals, and of course he's not really around anymore. These are the red stripes on the silver body. This car was in a magazine, something similar to it anyway. And I made my own bench seat by joining the buckets together and flocking them. As you can see, I've got the incorrect red stripes on the trunk lid. However, you may be wondering where these wheels came from here. These are from a 58 Chevy. 
that I was working on and I decided to use the steel caps on here because the car in the magazine it had the dog dish hubcaps but I couldn't find any and as you can see here it does have the posable steering which is a hallmark of this kit and again I used some seat belts from other model cars that I had in my collection in the spare parts bin you can see the Cutlass S logo on here Cutlass S of course was the lower kind of version from the 442 W30 now I'm just going to open up the hood and show you what's underneath and here in the engine bay, I've got the motor painted gold with that nice red air cleaner. I removed one side of the snorkels because my example, of course, didn't have it. So there it is inside that engine bay. Here we have the other version of this kit, which of course is the 1969 Hearst Olds. And as you can see, it's got that nice scoop on there. That, of course, was the true Ram air scoop. It's got the 455 cubic inch. Under the hood, of course, I got our Hearst Olds decal right there. This is the only car that had the stripe on the back, but again, it was a special edition. You can see my little I Love Model Cars decal on there, as well as the license plate down below. Now, these wheels are not part of the actual AMT kit. These are something else. And what I did is I wanted to use the parts for that posable front end on another Oldsmobile, so I used an actual 1970s Johan undercarriage on here. And that completes our look at the AMT Ertl 1969 Oldsmobile W30442. And if any of you have built this in the past, we'd love to see your finished models over on our Facebook page. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great review of this model kit. And if you love these awesome, amazing unboxing videos that I make every week, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and pound that notification bell so that every time I upload a brand new video, you're the first person to know about it, and the first person to watch it, and the first person to comment on it. And if you want to see all our amazing model kits that are for sale, because this is in my own collection, don't forget to check out www.monster-hobbies.ca today to see what I have for you. And until next time, everybody, Keep those wheels on the road.